Good morning. Let's see if this works out. It's a little different. Um, just coming back from the gym. I don't know if you could uh, if you could smell me. You know. <laughs> <coughs> The gym has always been one of those, uh, one of those weird things where it's like, uh, it, it's almost a pure exercise of self-discipline. I don't know anyone who goes to the gym and, uh, does a workout and then leaves the gym and is like, man, I sure am pretty mad that I went to the gym. Wish I hadn't done that. And like the rest of the day, they're like, mm, so stupid of me. Why did I go to that gym? <laughs> but if you, that's if you can actually get yourself there. <laughs> but that, that seems to be the challenge is, is actually getting yourself there. Because once you're there, you know, life gets a lot easier. And then once you do it, you're like, oh boy, that was great. And the, the difficulty is just, it's almost like pure self-discipline. <laughs> like, this is going to be good. And it's going to be fun. And I know I'm going to be happy about it. And everything about it is going to be good. Except... Eh, I'm kind of tired. Yep, that was it. <clears throat> when I was uh, 20, I guess, I had a uh, upper respiratory infection that was probably the sickest I've ever been. Um, and ever since then, I've had, I don't know what it's called, it's like an intermittent asthma, or it's like a situational asthma, or something like that. It's very strange. Um, I don't have asthma per se, like I can just go, you know, run around the block a few times and not have a problem, but then randomly I'll be like sitting on the couch doing absolutely nothing and then I'll get a, an asthma attack, I'll, I'll realize that I'm wheezing. <coughs> so sometimes it's just, you know, shortness of breath or something else. Sometimes I take the albu albuterol and I have no reaction. I'm like, okay, well, it wasn't that at least, but sometimes I'm just like doing nothing and then... It'll, I'll have, uh, what is, I guess, essentially an asthma attack. It's nothing aggressive or anything. It just usually happens, like, randomly twice a year, maybe. Maybe four times, and maybe zero times. It's very strange. <clears throat> uh, but like I was saying, the, uh, it's, it's almost a pure exercise of self-discipline. It's, it's very strange. <laughs> You know, there's a few other things. It's delaying gratification. I mean, whenever you're delaying gratification, you're always going to have a, uh, a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost always going to be positive for you. But it's just... It's strange. Like, even when I... Even if I only work out a little bit, I feel good for, like, three days. Like, I like, I like that, that tight feeling in my chest. Not the asthma feeling. The... The muscle feeling, the muscle soreness. <laughs> so, the the difficulty. This is my first gym trip in a, a very long time. Uh, so I'm trying to get back into it, but the difficulty for me is always not doing things 120 uh, percent, not overextending myself, pacing myself. Pacing myself is the right uh, the right statement. That's what I need to do. Is just pace myself. I get on the treadmill and I'm like, okay, I got to do three miles. And at about a mile and a quarter, I'm like, okay, let's, let's cut that three miles in half. We'll just, we'll, we'll keep it easy, you know, the first day in a gym in literally years. But <clears throat> I'll consider it, like, I'm 35, I'll be 36 and, uh, next month, actually, yeah. So, like... And, and I don't doctor. 
Uh, so I, I'm viewing this as uh, as my health care. This is, you know, getting your heart rate elevated a few times a week, you know, keeping your muscles in shape, uh, fighting off that just random soreness or random aches, that kind of stuff. I'll call that I'll call that a win. I'll call that health care. Uh, oh, actually, I do have a. I do have a healthcare plan that cares if I have a gym membership. I should probably let them know about that. They give me points. You hear that? Points. You know, uh, you know Dave Ramsey? He loves points. It's like, man, how did, how did you make your millions, sir? Well, Visa had these, uh, had these credit points. And, and I would get so many of those points by, by spending money. <laughs> <coughs> You gotta spend money to make money. Remember that, Visa. <laughs> yeah, interest. Brought to you by interest. Oh man. So the this is a um, the place is actually a. Uh, oh, I got. <clears throat> so the thing that I'm. <coughs> kind of wrapping my head around is I want to put well I always want to put more stuff into emacs but if you are somewhat data minded like if, if you recognize that everything that's coming through is basically text all of your interactions are basically text you know, aside from hex dumps of jpegs or whatever but mostly basically text uh <coughs> You can format things all kind, all every which way. So I have a uh, we have a ticketing system that we work out of, and I uh, I got into Emacs and I'm like, hey, how hard would it be to to pull this? So uh, I'm not working on like the uh, the login and the ex the uh, data exchange or anything like that. Although you could probably handle that EWW, <clears throat> but uh, there's what I'm doing is just logging in on my browser and then dumping the cookies and any other session information and then putting it into uh, the Emacs URL requester and just letting it run with those same cookies and browser details. <clears throat> so it's like I'm initiating the session on the browser and then I'm continuing the session or maintaining it in Emacs. I'm still kind of getting the lingo. Um, the output of some of these things is like it, it's a blob of data you know kilobytes of data so it gets dumped into a not a variable or a text object it creates a buffer and I thought that would be like a buffer that I could browse to but not really it creates a like a transient buffer <coughs> and then I can either assign that buffer or display that buffer and like do stuff with that buffer or I can make it exist only in memory and uh, run, I do stuff with it and then take output and you know process logic on it. So I can create that entire web transaction, pass the return, uh, all of the response object, the entirety of the response object, which gets loaded as a, as a DOM, <clears throat> pull out the tags that I want grab the uh, the little bits of data and then convert it into well once it's a, a data once it's a uh, DOM it's a list anyways but basically get it into a, a, a more amenable format and I'm I'm just once again struck by the uh, the simplicity of Lisp just everything's just a list it's all just lists <laughs> and uh, I drove home yesterday thinking like man like it, it's unreal what you can do with car, cutter, and cons, and that's it. <clears throat> it's just unbelievable. And I also did the, uh, I also made the the noob mistake, the Lisp noob mistake, of looking up how to iterate over a list. <laughs> because the correct answer to how to iterate over a list is recursion. Um, but you still think like, okay, I need a for loop. And like, I need a while loop. And I need these different kinds of loops. And no, you just just iterate over the list. Uh, iterate over the list recursively. <coughs> uh, 
And again, it's always just so simple. You know, you think you want... Uh, this is... I don't... I'm making economic parallels. Watch out. <laughs> uh, you think you want all these options. <clears throat> and all it seems to do is distract you and make things more difficult for you. You know, it just, it just complicates things. Um, but as, as usual, uh, uh, Lisp is a great language for making a language for what your process is. So, uh, as long as you make things, uh, properly functional, you, you really won't have to touch stuff. Uh, and Elisp has the, the benefit of having a lot of the, a lot of its, uh, functional, a lot of its, uh, methods, uh, data, data type objects, a lot of that stuff's already kind of pre-done for you, and as long as you pick up the lingo and figure out how to read the help information, you can figure out, you know, what your output is and what to do with it, you know, what you should be doing with it, <clears throat> rather than trying to look at it and pick it apart. <coughs> Again, the most difficult thing about it is just wading into it because it's so it's so different and the language is so different. And by language, I mean like the... Uh, the data objects, I guess? They're, they're all... It's all just one type of data, but... I don't know. In Elisp, there's... There's vocabulary you need to learn in order to be able to read the... Uh, read any of the help documents. <laughs> But once you learn that, you know, it's, it's dead simple. Well, again, it's, it's just, everything's a list. <laughs> so getting that data transferred into list format and then just being like, okay, like I, I have it. Uh, I can refer to it however I want. I can change it. I can act on it. <clears throat> and you can use the existing uh, tools that you already made to, to make accessing that data a lot easier. And it all runs live. And if you want to screw around with it, you just you add a module module. You add some uh, <clears throat> some functions. You import them and eval them, and they get loaded into your running Lisp machine. And just use them. And if you don't like them, leave and come back, and they're gone. <laughs> <coughs> it's very interesting. Uh, I also ran into a whole bunch of problems with. Uh, uh, the dependencies because I was in Windows 64 bit. Uh, so if you do run Windows and you get the uh, the pre pre rendered pre compiled binaries for Windows, uh, just make sure you get all the dependencies. Uh, I know it's like 200 megs or whatever it is, but get all the dependencies. It's worth getting because weird stuff will happen uh, because you're just in Windows, bro. I mean, uh, nuts to Richard Stallman, but he would not approve. <clears throat> and you're just gonna, you're gonna have a, a harder time. So if, if ever you find yourself stuck in your Lisp or in your, uh, in your Emacs on Windows, make sure you preface any questions you ask with, by the way, this is Windows and I didn't load all the dependencies first. <laughs> because uh, it's just, it's not fun. The assumption is, the assumption is not Windows. But it's just so cool to have it completely cross-platform like that. <sighs> All right. <clears throat>